rules. We don't need to do much with this because we've been over this ground repeatedly, haven't we? Because we've been through Galatians. We've spent time in Romans. We know we're not put right with God by any other means than by grace through faith alone. By grace you can save through faith. That not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, so that no one should boast. For we are God's work which it created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which He has prepared for us to walk in. We know that, don't we? We know these verses. We, we're aware of this issue. But rules keep on popping up. And people keep trying to judge you on the basis of rules. Two years ago I stood up in a minister's conference because all the ministers were trying to judge younger ministers because they're not appearing in their time. Which is why I'm unpopular. This is wrong. This becomes a gospel issue. When rules are applied in this way. Judging one another on the basis of rules. Now you've heard me preach in a time. You've heard me preach out of a time. Mercifully, you've normally seen me preach in a shirt, which is good, isn't it? <laughs> but that's for other reasons. Does it affect the preaching much? You can have a duff one with a tie on or a duff one without a tie on. It comes the same way, doesn't it? Paul is speaking with authority from his own experience because he knows about rules-based religion. He knows it very well indeed from the inside out. Having grown up as a teenager, a young man, and as a teacher within the extreme rules-based approach of first century Phariseeism. And he can speak with authority on the subject, and the first thing he says about it is that it is very worldly. It pretends to be complete opposite. It pretends to be extremely spiritual, but it is very worldly, says Paul. This is a bit of a shocker. The whole point of Phariseeism was to make heavenly religious life accessible to the ordinary people by making clear rules, do's and don'ts for everyday life. The trouble is, it became something of a growth industry. So arguably you have to be rich enough to go into their study, you have to know about them, let alone to do them. Paul is saying, far from being concerned with a heavenly spiritual objective, his experience of such things, this rules-based religion, seems pretty close to the stuff being peddled at philosophy, was that these rules and its, 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 its observance was all very good. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. It's all very worldly. Their purpose and their subject matter is material, physical, this worldly. This is ironic. Because the stuff the proto-Gnostic teachers afflicting the church at Colossae were supposed to despise was this material stuff, this, this worldly stuff. And look at the focus they're playing on. Here, says the Apostle, is the big problem with that. It's worldly because of the stuff it deals with. And because it's worldly, and because it belongs to this world, it's all to do with stuff that's going to go up in smoke, verse 22. It's perishing. It's perishing. By the grace God has given me, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. Someone else is building on it. Each one should build with care. No one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. See, back to that again. Now, if anybody builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with a match. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. We need to trust that it is worthwhile to spend what we have now to gain what we trust God to deliver to us there and then. This is the nature of living biblical faith. And if we trust in Him, with what you've got now in your hand and investing it with him for the future when you can't see it. What are you going to build with? Well, you need to build for the future, you need to trust to do that, but more than that, you need to invest in the appropriate coinage. You don't see anybody walking into Lloyds or Barclays in Tandala with a bale of hay or straw on their shoulder, do you? Maybe you have, <laughs> but they were just generally passing. They weren't making a deposit of that. Lamb under their arm? Put this in my account, will you? Certainly not, sir. Go away. Hide the heads. 
No chance. The point Paul's making is there will come a point in real time when the things we've done for the Lord will have to be in the appropriate kind. They'll have to be His thing and they'll have to be the genuine thing. Okay, so by the grace of God, I trust we can all point to people who've learned Christ or been helped to learn Christ from us. And who are going on with the Lord and bearing fruit for eternal life. I trust, trust we can see that. I'm sure every one of us will find too. There have been things we feel we've been able to do for the Lord that we felt then or later were really God at work, but that have turned out a bit different on closer or longer examination. No, actually, that was strong. But Paul is saying that this rules-based religion is all straw. And it's all about things that are perishing. And things that will be consumed that is not only worldly by nature, but perishing in the long run. And, in the present, it does nothing to help. It's useless. Such regulations, verse 23 have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. You know that very well. You don't need me to spell that out for you. You don't need me to tell you how much you love it when somebody tells you, a mature adult, what you should do and how you react to that. And you don't need me to tell you how easy you find it to do the things that you're told you should do anyway. Not very useless in restraining sensual indulgence.